Hey, how you doing? This is the Cool Breeze Show. And today, I have the owner of Yeilani, um, Mrs. Yeitunde. Now, first off, we were just talking about this. Where did the name Yeilani come from? So Yeilani is a combination of my name and my two daughters. My name is Yeitunde. Mm -hmm. My daughters are Aaliyah and Amani. So Yeilani. What does uh, Yeitunde mean? In the spirit of my mother. In the spirit it's of my mother. It's a Nigerian mother. name. All right. So what do we have here today? I, obviously, so, I got some bonnets. Let me rock the bonnet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. All right. So these are waterproof bonnets. They can be used outside or um, in the shower, you know, outside when it's raining. And this is an invention of mine. I actually have a patent. These are patent pending. So they have a humidity blocker inside and it will absorb all of the humidity that forms under the um, bonnet. Mm. And it pulls it away from your hair. So you, if you straighten your hair, it keeps your hair straight. You don't have to worry about your curls falling. Um, yeah, so it's really a wonderful invention. I try to provide solutions for black women to make it easier for us to manage our hair. All right, and what are some of these? What do we have here? So this is my hair care line, 100% um, plant-based, no chemicals. Does this um, have the beard? I do have beard oil okay, and beard wash, but okay. I did not bring it. Oh, okay. Yes, so I have so many products. I wanted to bring like the top product um, products in the line. So we have the, um, and I'll use the bigger bottle, this is the Moisture Blast Conditioning Shampoo. So it's a gentle shampoo. It's a two-in-one, so you don't have to worry about following it up with a conditioner to detangle your hair. Um, you'll reduce shedding within the first wash by 80%. Mm. It helps with detangling, it softens your hair, and it moisturizes your hair. The next one is a clarifying shampoo. Now, a lot of black women, and women in general, we don't know the difference between a clarifying shampoo and a conditioning shampoo, because nobody ever that? teaches us. So a conditioning shampoo, it gently washes your hair, mm -hmm. but it doesn't strip everything out of your hair. Um, and a clarifying shampoo removes all the buildup. Uh, so like the grease? Yeah, the clarifying shampoo will remove buildup, okay. grease, whatever, you, the products that you put in your hair on a daily basis, it'll remove all that. And your follicle, your, um, it need, your, yeah, your follicle needs that. I'm sorry, your cuticle needs that because the cuticle has scales on them. And but what's the difference in a follicle and a cuticle? The follicle is where the hair comes out of. Oh, so the cuticle is okay. the actual hair. Okay. So um, the cuticle has scales on it. And if you have too much product on top of the scales, they will become brittle in certain areas and break and split. So you want to make sure that you have a clarifying shampoo and a conditioning shampoo and you balance the use of both. So, um, and that's what this is. It's a two-in-one. It also does not strip the life out of your hair, but it will remove the buildup. Right, right. Um, after that, we have the leave-in conditioning spray. Now, this is something that you can use on wet or dry hair, and I love this because when I want to do a twist out in the middle of the week and I don't want to wash my hair or wet my hair, then I'll just spray it with the leave-in and then I'll do my twist out. Now, some people use water to detangle their hair. The problem with that is water makes your hair dry and brittle and it makes your hair harder to detangle oh. so you want to use something gentle like this leave-in conditioning spray you can spray it on your hair it doesn't dry your hair out um, and it also helps your hair it helps heal your hair as well my products will seal your cuticle from end to end which means your the scales on your um, cuticle are all laying smoothly in order oh, okay. that's what my products can do um, after the last that, one yes we have the hot oil treatment now this is an oil you can put on your scalp, you can massage your scalp, you can use it as a hot oil treatment as well. How do you well. heat it up? Well, what you do is you, um, once you wash your hair, mm -hmm. you put the oil on your hair and you can either sit under a hair dryer or you can get a hot washcloth, put it on your um, top of your head and just kind of wrap your head in like a hot towel or washcloth. Or you can just get a conditioning cap and leave it on and let your scalp, the heat from your body. Can I use this? No, this is, oh. this is, this is strictly to uh, protect your hair from humidity. So this is for protection? Yes. Okay. So, and, so, and I also use this on my ends because I'm growing my hair out and I don't want my ends to split. So in a continuation of uh, making sure that my cuticle is smooth from end to end, which helps prevent split ends, I put the oil on my ends as well. Okay. So what kind of got you into this field? What made you just start dabbling in the, uh, the fine arts of hair care products? So it actually became a hobby. Um, wow. So my mom, as a little girl, she would prepare stuff like conditioners, mayonnaise and oil and egg and kind of put it in our hair. Mayonnaise? Mayonnaise. Pure mayonnaise, <laughs> not the stuff with the chemicals in it. 
and it would be act oh, as a okay. conditioner because we really didn't have really good hair products on the market for us. They basically built products for or designed products for straight hair, and they just said, you know, they just we would just we just had to buy them. Right. Um, so we did different things at home. So that was the introduction to making my own products. But when I grew up and got went to college and had a perm. And I was trying to wonder why everybody who went to the stylist always had long perms and then mine would get so long and break off. Mm. So I started doing research um, and then I became a student of uh, architecture at Georgia Tech. And I started looking at, uh, I'm sorry, not architecture, yeah, I was architecture and textiles. Textiles is what actually contributed to, to what I'm doing today because I saw my first um, hair follicle, I'm sorry, hair cuticle. Um, under a microscope in my textile class, oh. and they talked about abrasion and moisture absorption, and I was just, so you're so a scientist. This is more than just <laughs> this is more right. than just uh, some grease or some shampoo. You're an actual scientist. You researched how to t actually take care of the individual strand of hair. Absolutely. Okay. And I because I, I learned a lot in textiles. While they were teaching me one thing, I was learning something else. So, and you know, we had chemistry classes, we had engineering classes, all these classes. I made sure that I took something away that had to do with our hair. I got you. And from there, I just started going to my friends' houses and mixing stuff for them. That was in the <laughs> 90s. Okay. And so, um, I wrote a hair care book called The Black Hair Care Revolution. I put that out oh. in 2009. Yes, it's not here. <laughs> was, like, that was next. <laughs> that was definitely <laughs> next. Where's the book? The book. Reading is essential. Yes. Um, I, like I said, I tried to bring the top items. Up. I got you. I got you. So I, brought the, I put the book out in 2009. Okay. Um, just the basics of natural hair care. I have recipes in there if people want to make their own natural products. Um, but I saw that there was still a void in the market. I have a patent on a hair comb design, and I was trying to get feedback to see if black women needed it. Mm -hmm. And they just kept saying, we need better products. And I'm like, we're at the natural hair show. They have better products. They were like, no. And so oh. listening to these sisters kind of, they were natural, but they were suffering. Right, and my right. thing was, I want you to be natural, and I want you to enjoy your hair. So you shouldn't have to suffer to have natural hair. Right. Um, so what I did was, it took me two years to formulate this line to make sure that I was addressing the issues that I saw with natural hair, and that's so where you, was So you born. started the, the business part of it with a comb, with simply a comb. The, I started the business part of it with the hair book. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. The book. Yes. So okay. it was about the same time I was designing the hair comb. Um, I put a website out in 98 called Let's Talk Hair, and I just kind of threw it out there. That was my contribution to black women. And I really didn't realize how much traffic it was getting because I was, my career, I was in my career and I wasn't paying attention to it. And once I realized that people were really listening and absorbing the information that mm -hmm. I put out and people were still having questions, that's when I said, okay, well, I see we still have a need, so let me write a book. Put the book out, put my poem out, I'm sorry, I got my patent on my comb. That's when I realized we still had a deficit in our uh, um, black women had a deficit when it came to hair care. And so I just try to address those deficits because I feel like we have so much more to offer and there's so much emotion tied to our hair. I want it to be easy for us and it can be easy through education and um, the good products. All right. Um, future love of my life. I need you to rub some of this on my head. You feel me? Like scratch, scratch. You know what I'm saying? Get to the cuticles. You did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do me right. Anyway, um, all right. So right now you have your brand. Um, mm -hmm. I met you at uh, Clark, Clark Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You're a vendor. Um, what's your dream for this brand? Wow, my dream is to reach as many Black women as possible. Um, so I would like my products in the stores. Um, just, you know, my book has sold over 5,000 copies with no advertising. So that's the beginning. Um, so yeah, I just want to reach as many black women as possible because I, in ten, within 10 years, I want it to be common for you to see black women with their natural hair down to their waist. Yes. Because yes, we can yes. grow our hair to our waist. We can. I've done it several times. Um, <laughs> and I want to teach other women. I'll give them that opportunity as well. All right. Um, yes, you can have 36 inches of your hair down the backside, you Absolutely. feel me? It Absolutely. is possible. Um, I actually, I actually shot an episode about natural hair and um, versus like weaves and things like that. And um, I, the biggest complaint that 
you hear black women say a lot of times is, okay, well, I like weed because I can be more versatile. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak on that? So I don't have anything against women wanting to wear hair weave or wigs. My problem is women who feel like they have to have hair weave or wigs to be beautiful. I want us to know that we can be beautiful any kind of way. You want to be versatile? That's fine. But know that you're just as beautiful when you take that wig off and don't feel like you have to be married to that wig or weave in order to get attention. And that's what I'm seeing a lot of. And that's where a lot of the damage comes in because these women, they have these wigs or these weaves and they're afraid to be out in public without them. So they may be on there wrong. They may glue them on. I'm sorry, glue them on there incorrectly. It may tear their hair out. Um, also, there are chemicals in these weaves and wigs that are causing alopecia. Um, they're making people sick, causing rashes. And it's just, it's, it's um, interfering with the happiness of our life, us enjoying our lives. So, nothing against it, but I would prefer, I mean, even if you decide to grow your hair to your waist, you might want to throw a short wig on, you know? Right. That's vers versatility. Um, but just know that you are beautiful and appreciate your beauty, your natural beauty first, then add on to it. All right. Um, and on the entrepreneur side, mm -hmm. if you were speaking to a young business owner, young lady, young man um, that wanted to get into business and they, you know, they, they just started, they have no real um, guidance, real. What advice would you give them? Start with a business plan, have a strategy. Don't start a business because you see somebody else making a lot of money. Start a business that comes from your passion. Because if it's, it's something that you're passionate about, passionate about, then it's not gonna feel like work all the time. Like I make these products, I slave over this. I mean, but I can't stop because I believe in what I'm doing. And it makes me feel good when I meet a reader or somebody who uses my products and like, this really helped me. I really loved your products. It made me, you know, my hair feel like X, Y, and Z. That warms my heart and keeps me going. So you want to do something like that. It, it's always, I always feel like it's more work when you see somebody else making money. You're like, oh, I need to go do what they do. You have to do the research. You have to, you know, kind of get an understanding of um, why they're doing what they're doing, how it's, how they're selling. That's a lot of extra work. But if you're passionate about something, you already have the knowledge about it. Mm. So it's going to save you time and energy, and plus you're going to enjoy it. Right. All right. Um, Mission Tune Day, where can they find you on social media? So, Yelani Hair, um, you can find me on Instagram at, at Yelani Hair. You can find me on Twitter at Yelani Hair. All the so social media platforms, Yelani Hair is my um, handle. And my website, can I go yeah, and put that in? Yeah, give them everything. www.yelani.com. All right, I'm finna go get my hair washed. This is K Breeze. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore K B R E E Z E. That's K Breeze underscore underscore. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook at El Cristo Negro. And you can look at this video and many others on my YouTube channel at Cool Breeze Media. Y'all have a good day. And use Yelani. Absolutely. These are kind of cool. You keep refrigerated? Mm -hmm. Well, they're all natural. They don't have to be refrigerated. They have a two-year shelf life. Mm -hmm. But I recommend refrigeration because it maintains the integrity of the oh. ingredients. Will they last longer than two years? If well, you keep you don't refrigerated? want them to last longer than I'm two just saying, years. what if I decide to buy them in bulk and I have two years supply? Yeah, well, no. Two years is it. I mean, if you want a product that lasts longer than two years, you're getting a bunch of chemicals. Oh. True, I'm looking out true. for your health. Yeah. I've had people ask me, oh, you know, tell me manufacturers, we need to put this chemical in there so it can last longer. Da -da. And I refuse to do that because I know those chemicals are going to cause my black sister's um, cancer. And I refuse to take a dollar um, to give my, my, my customer base cancer. Well, kind of forever. Y'all have a good day. And just know we love you. Yes, we do. All right.